This video goes over all the things that I'm looking for from the Portland Trailblazers during their four game preseason slate. This video is made to get you geared up for the preseason, as well as hopefully make these practice games a little bit more interesting as I give you things to look for. And if you need something else to make these preseason games interesting, this video is sponsored by BetUS. Our channel has its very own BetUS signup link that's in the description box below. It'll give you 125% bonus. Every season over on our second channel, Blazers Uprise podcast, we have a picks against the spread segment that we keep track of all season long, and all of our hosts on Blazers Uprise podcast podcast will be participating in that. BetUS is going to be our sponsor all season long for Picks Against the Spread. We'll be using BetUS spreads during those segments, and if you need to practice before the regular season, there are spreads for preseason games. BetUS also has props for Rookie of the Year. Scoot Henderson is plus 250. Futures bets such as who the NBA champion will be. Unfortunately, the Blazers are plus 15,000 on that. BetUS is a great way to have some fun this NBA season with their variety of betting options, as well as their reputation for reliability, security, and excellent customer service. So use that sign up link in the description box below and get that 125% BetUS bonus. Thank you to BetUS for sponsoring this video. Number one thing to look for is obviously Scoot Henderson. The rookie comes in as the third overall pick and the Blazers essentially replace Damian Lillard with him. I think a lot of people are expecting a good rookie season from Scoot and for him to be one of the top two or three rookies this year. However, I'm still unsure how good he's going to be right off the bat. I think his playmaking is going to be good and he has some talented offensive players around him to spread the ball out to. However, the one question with him starting off his NBA career is his shot making ability, especially from behind the three-point line. Seeing him knock down some threes in preseason would be a good sight. He also needs to get better at finishing off of two feet. He's really good when he can load up off of one, but in the NBA, when you're six foot two, you gotta be able to finish in a variety of different ways. I also want to see Scoot use more of that floater that was non-existent in his first year in the G League, but that he really developed during his second season. And then defensively, does Scoot Henderson look like a positive defender right off the bat? Matisse Thibel was giving him credit with getting a lot of stops and scrimmages during training camp, and we might be able to see that play out in preseason games if we're lucky. I'm going to do a player preview on Scoot Henderson at some point, but it's going to be after the preseason so that I can give him statistical goals and have a little bit more of a feel for what to expect and what he may need to develop over the course of next season. In building off of Scoot Henderson, the next thing I'm looking for is chemistry, especially between the guards and DeAndre Ayton. The Blazers, of course, brought in DeAndre Ayton in the Damian Lillard slash Yusuf Nurkic trade, and he's an upgrade at the center spot. However, in order to truly be impactful, he needs to have good chemistry with Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, and even Shaden Sharp. The Blazers haven't had a true lob target of a big man in quite a long time, and DeAndre Ayton is just that. So is Anthony Simons able to throw lobs to him that he couldn't with some of his previous teammates in the past? Does Scoot Henderson have good chemistry with DA? And the pick and roll game between him and the guards is going to be interesting because not only can he roll and be that lob target, he also is a true pick and pop threat. I'm looking forward to seeing seeing how DeAndre Ayton decides whether to roll or pop. That's a read that's dependent upon what sort of defensive scheme the opposing team is running. And since we're talking about DeAndre Ayton, another thing I'm looking for is DeAndre Ayton shooting threes. I covered DeAndre Ayton in a bit of a player preview style video right after his trade. You can go watch that. But in that video, I said I think DeAndre Ayton needs to start shooting threes in order to take a true leap to stardom because there really isn't any stars in the league that aren't a top three defensive big man or that can't shoot threes or attack from the perimeter. Right now, DeAndre Ayton doesn't really shoot threes, doesn't really attack from the perimeter, and he's not a top three defense big, so in order to take that true leap to stardom, I think he has to add one of those things, and I think the easiest and most projectable skill that I could see DA uh, developing is that three-point ball. Now, his shot's a little too flat. I don't know if he can ever become a truly consistent three-point threat with how, how flat his shot is, but... If he can show some flashes in preseason, that would be nice going into the season. And also, I think if he's shooting two or three threes a game in preseason, obviously it's dependent upon how many minutes he's playing. But if he's shooting threes on higher volume, then that would be a good sign because I think he just needs to shoot them and try and develop that confidence from behind the arc. And even if he's struggling, it takes some time to build confidence. We saw that with Yusuf Nurkic in previous years where he'd shoot some threes and never shot a good percentage on them until last season. And then 
then all of a sudden he became a 36% three-point shooter and started knocking them down. So DeAndre Ayton shooting threes is something I want to see, especially in the preseason. Next is Shaden Sharp, and there's really no one specific skill I'm looking for from Sharp. I'm just looking for some well-rounded growth, especially with some of the leaps he made at the end of last season. I think he started making reads really well, so I'm looking for Sharp to hit both of his centers on lobs, whether he's playing with Robert Williams III or DeAndre Ayton. And that goes back to developing some of that chemistry, which I think will be key for the Blazers this preseason with a bunch of new guys. But for Sharp, I just want to see him try and make the right decisions, try and take the right shots. I also want to see if his ball handling looks sharper, because that's something he said he worked on this offseason. That's something he definitely needed to improve. And then mid-range shooting, he didn't shoot great percentages last year, but always seemed like the type of guy that could become a true mid-range threat with how high he jumps on his pull-ups, as well as how smooth he is getting into him and some of the footwork he shows off. And then lastly, defensively, the main thing I want to see on defense is him not putting his hands behind his back when whoever he's guarding drives the lane and gets a little bit of a step on him, because last year Shane Sharp had a really big problem with not finishing defensive plays, especially if he was beat, and I think that was mostly because he was trying hard not to to foul but it looked like he just simply gave up on a lot of plays because of it so there needs to be some improvement there and it would be nice to see that improvement starting in preseason the next thing i'm looking for is the battle for the backup power forward spot and i'll actually have a dedicated video just for this topic after one or two preseason games that'll be focusing on tamani kamara jabari walker and chris murray the three of whom I think are in a battle for the backup power forward spot behind Jeremy Grant. Now, I'm not sure how many minutes will be available for those guys because it's going to be hard to slide Jeremy Grant down to the small forward position when you have five perimeter players at the point guard, shooting guard, and small forward positions that all deserve heavy minutes in Scoot, Simons, Sharp, Brogdon, and Matisse Thibel, who they just paid. Also, it's said that Robert Williams the third and DeAndre Ayton will play some together. Robert Williams is the backup center behind Ayton, but I expect Ayton to see heavy minutes, so you might see some two big lineups as well. But I don't think the Blazers will go into the season running an eight-man rotation, so I do think that ninth spot in the rotation is up for grabs at that pack-up power forward spot. And right now, the Blazers have three intriguing young pieces that are all in competition with each other, it seems like. Tamani Kamara has been getting good reviews out of training camp, and he seemed like he was just a throw into the Suns trade, but I actually really liked that pickup. He was a guy that looked really good in summer league, can play some defense, solid athlete, can knock down a three-point shot, his form is really smooth. He can also cut. He just seems like a really well-rounded player that might be a role guy in this league simply because he doesn't have many true weaknesses, which is hard to find with where he was drafted at the 52nd overall spot. So with him apparently looking really good in training camp, does that translate to the preseason? We'll have to wait and see. Jabari Walker also seems to have improved his body. He had one of the higher body fat percentages coming into the league, but I've never knocked guys for that because if somebody can get drafted with their body not even close to being optimized, then there's actually a lot more room for improvement in that regard, and I think we've seen that with Jabari Walker. Now, how will it translate to the court? Will he look quicker? Will he look faster? I don't know. Also, with a three-point shooting that he showed in college, struggled with last season, but seemed to make progress in during summer league, will that show up? Because I think that is the key for Jabari Walker to be able to knock down threes in order to be a solid enough two-way threat to get some minutes. Then lastly, Chris Murray, who the Blazers drafted 23rd overall in last year's draft, is the type of prospect that is NBA ready without a ton of long-term upside. The Blazers said they have a lottery grade on Chris Murray, so you would expect him to win the job against two other players that were drafted in the 50s the past couple of years. And when you look at his twin brother Keegan Murray and his success with the Kings, you hope to see some of the same out of Chris. However, there's a reason Keegan went much higher in his draft than Chris did. Keegan is the better player. It'll just be interesting to see how similar Chris looks on an NBA floor. Next thing to look for is up-tempo play, because the Blazers haven't had much of that the past few seasons, but I expect this team to run a lot and be in the top five in pace in the league. Scoot Henderson is a guy who's always pushing the ball. DeAndre Ayton and Robert Williams can run the floor. This team is built to run. And that's been an emphasis from Chauncey Billups in his tenure as Blazers coach. However, the Blazers haven't had as good of pieces to run the floor as they do this season. So will this team come out of the gates just running in transition constantly in preseason? 
we'll have to see. That is something I'm definitely looking for. And then also, of course, you want to see them execute in transition. You don't want this team to be so fast that they're out of control or playing sloppy. But with the athleticism of guys like Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, Amfordy Simons, DeAndre Ayton, Robert Williams, even Jeremy Grant, you have a ton of lob targets on this team that will be a threat in transition. And it should be a lot of fun. But when this team is not running in transition, I'm curious to see what their half-court offense looks like, especially in comparison to their half-court offense last year, which was mainly just Damian Lillard, you're a god, carry our offense, and drop 60-point, 70-point games. Is there new sets, new wrinkles? How do they utilize Scoot in the half-court? Is it a lot of spread, pick, and roll like they've run with Dame in the past? Is it some of the same drive and kick philosophy that they emphasized, especially early on last season? I'm really curious to see how the half-court offense looks, and I do expect it to have some growing pains. Now let's focus on team defense. I'm curious to see what schemes they run. I'm curious to see if DeAndre Ayton and Robert Williams the third are always playing up at the point of the screen or even trapping or hedging. Maybe we won't see the full defensive playbook in preseason because Chauncey Billups doesn't want to spoil it. However, Billups has been an advocate of switching things up and playing some more aggressive defensive styles. And if this team is going to make getting out in transition a point of emphasis, you would expect them to try and force some turnovers and be aggressive on the perimeter. Now that they have two legitimate rim protectors, perimeter defenders can be more aggressive on the ball or playing passing lanes because they have more substance behind them to help make up for any mistakes. But things to look for are what pick and roll schemes are they running? Where are they funneling the ball? Are they still running that zone that they were running last year? There's a few different schematical things that we'll be touching on when we cover these preseason games. Anyway, that's what I'm looking for in this year's preseason. Let me know if I missed anything or if there's anything that you're looking for that wasn't included in this video. Once again, huge thank you to BetUS for sponsoring our channel. Use that link down in the description box below and get a 125% bonus. I know a lot of you guys in this community are very smart basketball wise, so you can put that to the test with BetUS. Thank you to them. And that's a wrap for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.